my name is Ben Booth. This is Big Sky Voices. And I'm Victor Walmet at Storyteller Films. Our guest today is Marshall Bear. Marshall came to my attention because he produced a full-length feature film here in Albuquerque about, oh, two years ago, maybe three, called Burning Bodie. And I wanted to ask Marshall about his experience of shooting a feature-length narrative film here in Albuquerque. Well, and I want to ask you later, where did you come up with the title? An intriguing <laughs> title, but go ahead, answer Victor's first. I can answer, gentlemen, I'm here to answer questions. <laughs> those you ask and those that you haven't yet asked. <laughs> Go ahead. So, tell me how. What was your experience of shooting a, a feature film here in in Albuquerque? Well, number one, I think it's important to say that it's the first time I've ever did it. Uh, so, I um, I think my story is about uh, an aging hippie who, after many years in a, as a career as an economic development specialist in third world countries, thought he could produce a movie, and I did. Okay. So, aging hippie, you've lost some of your hair over the years, uh, I can well, see. Well, yes, it's on the top right. of my head at least. Okay. So, you, you thought you could produce a movie here. Tell me about the experience of doing it. Well, um, I uh, first of all, I met a, a very talented screenwriter named Matt McDuffie, and uh, Matt has got a lot of great credits. Scripts he uh, wrote, um, and we teamed up, and we um, came up with an idea together. And uh, he wanted to do a coming-of-age story. Right. And I said, well, coming-of-age implies a certain destination. Where are you going? <laughs> and he said, it's when the discovery of a young person to put somebody besides themselves first in their life. Interesting. And that was the way the whole story began. I fell in love with the idea, and we, uh, we did a lot of talking about it and Matt went away and his very productive creative self and came up with a, with a, a beautiful script. Okay. That's wow. how we started. Okay. Wow. You know, it's, um, yeah, that, you know, I don't know how many iterations of title options we went through, but Bodhi is the name of the young man who dies at the beginning of the movie. Oh, it's okay. a proper name. Yeah, it's a proper name. Wow. And uh, Bodhi um, was everybody's best friend in high school. And now it's five years later, and his friends, um, upon learning about his death, one of them wants to organize a celebration for him. Ah. And that celebration she wants to call is a funeral, not a funeral. A funeral, because they're going to have... <laughs> they're going to celebrate. <laughs> they're going to have fun. <laughs> they're going to have fun. And so, so Bodhi, the name Bodhi is the name of, of the young man who dies, but there is a certain spiritual element to it in two ways. Mm -hmm. um, there's a beautiful line in the, um, in the movie where Dylan, the protagonist, is speaking to his colleague and she's convincing him to go back home from Chicago to Albuquerque to attend the funeral. And he's just, there's a lot going on, the audience right. doesn't know what's going on. And, um, and at the end, you know, she, he's reluctant, she's trying to convince him. And at the end she said, now what is the name of your friend again? And he said, Bodhi. And she said, ah, to awaken. <laughs> and so, in so a sense... You come full circle there. Exactly. So the, the idea is a coming of age is an awakening. Yeah. And, uh, and so I can't say that Matt and I deliberately called this young man Bodhi because of this. But, you know, like in all great stories, you discover them. Yes. And their truth yes. as you as you write them and make them and so on. Yeah. Alright, how far along are you? Uh six months? Something like that. So what are you doing here? So I mean I don't know. Uh, do, you think about it? do you have any family? Um fosters mostly. Maybe a few cousins. I keep thinking how lucky I am. I'm gonna have someone who needs me. Yeah? Most people are just stuck looking for someone who even wants them. So, when you raised the money and you organized this thing, produced it, uh, 
Would you do it again? I'd love to do it again. Really? So oh, you had fun with it? I, I, you know, I tell you, for all you independent filmmakers out there and producers, um, it's a tough business. And but we always started with a a vision of bringing this thing into every possible market we could. Yeah. And we did. Uh, uh, Burning Bodie was. Uh, the centerpiece film at the Austin Film Festival mm -hmm. in our home state. Nice. Uh -huh. I saw that. And um, and it was sold into distribution, and it's it had a limited theatrical run, but now you can see Burning Bodie at just about every streaming channel in the U.S. and more recently in the U.K. So what about an hour and twenty nine minutes? Something. It's like a that? standard feature length film. I think it's ninety three minutes and 42 seconds. Ah, okay. Now this is a hard question, but where did I watch it? Did I watch it on Netflix or Amazon? One of those two, right? Uh, you, it was on Showtime. It still is uh, on Showtime. Showtime. That's right. It's, That's on, right. it's, on, it's on Netflix. It's on okay. Amazon. It's on a whole range of different, uh, different platforms. So the, but would I do it again? Well, uh, I guess that's why I, I wanted to state that what we did and this is, again, the message I want to give to everybody who wants to do it, is we accomplished what we set out to do. We should celebrate him, Dylan. I want to have this, like, absurd, surrealist, midsummer night's trippy, crazy funeral. It sounds sacrilegious. How is that sacrilegious? Well, Ember, you don't throw a party when someone dies. You have a wake. That's a party. Yeah, I guess. Katie's gonna help me. Yeah? Yeah. And she's not seeing anyone. I don't care. Yes, you do. Ever. Uh huh. Well, and uh, I don't know how many ask, huh? more can you ask. We, yeah. we told a beautiful story in a beautifully cinematic way. Yeah. And, uh, now, um, I know your next question is, is you know, how often have you gone to the bank to, uh, to <laughs> deposit all of those? And it, it'll take time. It's yeah. a tough market for an independent uh, producer to, to make money in this, in the, in this industry. You Especially get, streaming but, in the residual world. Those well, streaming residuals are those are, right. those are those Those are, for me, it's yet to be seen yeah. what kind of returns. Did you, find, uh, did you find the talent here in in New Mexico, well, we to accomplish most of of the work of the film below the line, almost exclusively below uh, the line, yeah. like the cinematographer, the, the electrician, the the, uh, the gaffer, the grip, uh, the line producer. Mm -hmm. um, uh, but we cast this from L.A. Uh, mm -hmm. You know, again, as a as a businessman, mm -hmm. you know, um, you've got to have name recognition of the people who are right. playing these roles. So. We were very fortunate uh, that, uh, it's a funny story too, uh, uh, Kaylee Cuoco, uh, Penny on The Big Bang Theory, is, plays one right. of the three leads, and she did a fabulous job. And we got to her through a casting director, and uh, Matt, the director, had probably hmm, auditioned maybe 25, 30 young women for the role of Katie, right. which was a tough, emotional uh, sort of... Um, Tension that goes throughout the movie, mm -hmm. and uh, and she Kaylee read, and Matt said, "Ah, I finally I found my Did Katie." Yeah. <laughs> and the casting director asked him, "Do you know who that is?" Mm -hmm. And Matt said, mm, "No, Not I don't." Really? <laughs> huh? I don't watch a lot of television, probably. <laughs> but it felt right, right? Well, Big Bang was not as big as it has become, but uh, so mm -hmm. Kaylee Cuoco. Uh, Virginia Matson, uh, I think many of the maybe uh, many of you may know of Virginia Matson. Right. Mm -hmm. um, we had again, but young talent, Cody Horn, um, be a beautiful job in the role of Ember, uh, Dylan uh, Liberon, um, and Andy Buckley, and the, uh, a whole range of other um, cast. So we did cast a couple of people here, yeah. but in support roles. Good okay. for you. So but you had your producer here, your director here, your writer here, but most of your acting talent came from out of the Los Angeles. Well, basketball. what we like to say here is a typical uh, typical uh, production that uh, that shoots in New Mexico, and there is a lot, and thanks to the 
to the governor and to the New Mexico Film Office. But uh, they, ha that's kind of a model where L.A. rents New Mexico. Mm -hmm. We like to think of our production as New Mexico rented You LA. rented, yes. <laughs> Very good. <laughs> and Wonderful. Well said. So the, we have amazing uh, crew. Um, our live producer, um, I'll mention a couple of names if Go I could. Go ahead. Heard. Yeah. Marge, Marge Ergus was just, if, she's tough. And uh, she complimented, uh, you know, my name is Bear. And I yes, guess you, right. and uh, I'm not one of those grizzly it? types. Yeah. I'm more of those teddy types of okay. bears. Mm -hmm. And thank goodness for Marge, who kept me on the straight and narrow. We had our grips and uh, our electricians, uh, all the crews. We had 25 interns from UNM on the set. Wow. So What a great thing for them. We had just, a, and the culture was fantastic. Thanks a lot to Matt and the cinematographer, David and Myrick, who came in from L.A. They just created a wonderful set. We never went more than 10 hours a day. They just uh, nailed it. And uh, right. so it was, right. a, it was, a, it was a, a, a really terrific experience. And so to your question, would I like to do it again? Absolutely. Absolutely. Are you working on any new We are. Matt, here? Matt and I have uh, another script, which we like to think, we call it Someday Soon. Mm -hmm. and really? Yeah. And well, it's I hope kind you of get like, to make it someday. <laughs> yeah, I do too. <laughs> but it's it's for our our, our generation. Yeah. Bo ba bo baby boomers. Yeah. So someday soon, gentlemen, maybe uh, we are about to enter that last big chapter of our lives. Oh, okay. Yeah. So good. the question we pose in the movie is, how are you going to approach it? Oh, yeah. Do you yeah. see it as an inexorable pathway towards death and dementia? Or do you see it as perhaps the biggest and biggest best chapter of your life. Well, the best thing I ever heard about that, Ben and Marshall, was a guy said, I want to die young at a very old age. <laughs> <laughs> so, will you produce the film that you're working on uh, someday soon in Albuquerque? Oh, totally. I yeah. mean, we're committed, I'm committed, yeah. to, um, to showcasing the creative talents of the residents of the state. And Has the Albuquerque Film Office, have they been a good resource for you? They're terrific, yeah. uh, just terrific. Yeah. Uh, the, uh, you know, we, we were able to benefit from the incentives, mm -hmm. and um, which are, you know, both film incentives in terms of rebates. We also had mm -hmm. resources to do the, uh, you know, the sort of crew upgrading, mm -hmm. which is also very good. So they have a great program. Um, it may not be the best, quote-unquote, uh, percent of incentives out there in the U.S., mm -hmm. but it must be one of the best-run programs in the, in the country. And I think for all film producers out there, there's a hidden cost uh, in, in working with a state government that doesn't know what they're doing. Mm -hmm. New Mexico they know knows what they're, what they're doing. doing. They're yeah. doing. Yeah. Yeah. Victor and I interviewed a couple here who were funding uh, a film project, uh, crowdfunding it. Okay. And uh, I was very surprised and pleased the other day they sent an email they said we hit our goal we are now filming good for that and you know I, I I didn't know crowdfunding could actually work and be that effective but they hit their goal and so you know uh, it's a new world isn't it it is uh, and uh, we haven't employed that uh, strategy and uh, I just uh, it w one could uh, I think the I think now that I am a quote a newly minted Producer, <laughs> uh, uh, I definitely definitely made you know Major some mistakes, bombs, huh? yeah. Right. So, but I, I think I've learned from those mistakes, and uh, um, so I think you know again in it, it's a brave new world in terms of how to make promote and market mm -hmm. uh, a film that you know essentially captures the vision of the filmmakers. Yeah. And uh, so my well, policy mm -hmm. was to to try to keep the cost down as low as possible mm -hmm. without sacrificing the filmmaker's vision. If, if you get close to that, and uh, do you have a home page set up yet, or will you have? Or, I guess what I'm trying to do is give this, is there a way that the audience could get in contact with you sure. if they wanted to help in some way or be a part of it? Yes, absolutely. I don't have a web page yet. You're going to, though. But I, uh, as of, uh, as soon as it takes me to get home, I'm putting <laughs> one up. Um, and, uh, you know, I... Would you it, prefer I'm a contact you by phone, email? Oh, it would definitely by, by email, yes. What is your email address, if you don't mind? No, I don't mind. It's uh, uh, Marshall Bear. That's... M-A-R-S-H-A-L-L-B-E-A-R, just like a bear, at 
comcast.net. And if you do want to express an interest, put in the put in the header someday soon. Someday soon. Uh, yes. I can't wait. I want to hear all about this. And of course, as we interview a lot of people that are either producers or actors or wannabes or mm -hmm. you know or investors sometimes. Mm -hmm. uh, We'll hook you guys together. Terrific. Maybe, you know, you may find someone that'll help, and uh, uh, and that would be our pleasure, of course. The whole purpose of Big Sky Voices is to put another drop in the water to give you some exposure to let your ideas go out there, and uh, that's why we don't charge for it. Because Victor and I fully believe we want to encourage more and more communication. In Marshall, take 60 seconds or even a little more if you need to. Yeah. Tell us what you were doing the last few weeks in the second largest film industry in the world. <laughs> Tell us about that. Well, um, in 60 seconds or less, I researched Nollywood, which is the Nigerian film industry, which happens to be the second biggest producer of films by the numbers of films, 2,500 a year. Now, amazing. and these are oftentimes low-budget fairs, but... Uh, with stories that are told in a traditional oral African style when they're very, very popular. Wow. Why I was there is, I, I told you I was an, I'm an economist, right. and I was there to explore the potential of Nollywood to create jobs for young women and men mm -hmm. in a state of Nigeria that is very susceptible to human trafficking. And so mm -hmm. the idea is that if we could come up with viable, aspirational opportunities for young women and men, maybe they and their parents would choose for them to pursue those careers right in the country rather than pursuing some mythical goal of emigrating to Europe, the U.S., right. and yeah. then getting trapped mm -hmm. on the right. way and sold into slavery. It's a sure. very, very sad story. Yeah. So Good on you. Yeah, All thank right. you. Right. Good, wonderful. You know, and, and Nigeria always has had this struggle of how do they integrate into the world economy? Mm -hmm. You know, they that, that is something they've been fighting for years, and it's not been an easy battle for them. Well, you know, they're oil dependent, mm -hmm. uh, and of course, the uh, so their force and fortunes rise and fall with the price of oil. Mm. But their their country is also trying to produce economic opportunities that are non oil based, and yeah. so Nollywood is a huge success story. A wow. huge success story, creating oh one point two to almost one. 1.5 million jobs. Really? Yeah, wow. for the country. So you had a good time. It was a fun trip, huh? I did. It was good, and uh, I look forward, you know, hopefully, that uh, whatever what the recommendations that I put forward for the company I work with will find the light of day, and we'll see uh, more jobs yeah. being created for young people Terrific. in the country. Well, I hope the same is true here in Albuquerque. I do, too. I look forward to it. In all of it. New Mexico. Thank you very much. Uh, yeah, I can't wait to see what you produce next. I, I can't either. You, have such a, you do have this... Uh, Ebulent spirit. It, it it emanates out a wonderful energy. Ben, and what does and ebulent know, mean? Uh, ebulent uh, is it like it just, joyful? It's like an ocean. It just keeps coming. Yeah, yeah it okay. just pours out <laughs> like a fountain. Okay, it's wonderful. It's a wonderful trait. Yeah, Thank I think you. it'd be fun to be on the uh, in the set and just watch you guys function. You know, <laughs> well, we have a good time. Yeah. Listen, life is too short, yeah. and uh, you know the I, I don't know if you're still filming or not, but uh, what the heck. You know the you know the myth of uh, Hollywood film set is, uh, you know it's a lot of egos clashing. Mm -hmm. You know, and the producer is the oftentimes the one in the middle yeah. who has to kind of create peace. <laughs> Fortunately, um, I'm a trained mediator, so I was ready for that role. Right. But but I to a uh, huge credit to my director Matt and to his whole team because they just kept that machine running and humming in a very beautiful way and and you can see it you can see it on the screen and yeah. you can tell when those film sets are not as as you know well managed harmonious uh, harmonious mm -hmm. yeah. you'll see it on the screen i guarantee yeah. regulation you know well marshall i want to thank you so much okay. for being our guest today here yeah my pleasure yeah. and a pleasure and uh i can't wait to get to know you better and see what what comes out next it's gonna oh. be great yeah okay yeah. well remember Hashtag whatever that might be and vote for. <laughs> no, thank you very much. Thank Adios, you. have a good day. Right. Thank, thank you, you so much. Thank, thank you for coming out. Yeah.